Hi, so I thought I'd uh, make a small video about a project I made it about a month ago, which is a little acceleration data collector that I put in the car or anything exciting that I want to know the acceleration of. This is the little unit here. It sits inside this wooden box, runs off an Arduino Uno. Um, the uh, actual acceleration chip or accelerometer chip is this. It's an MPU 6050 I believe and uh, the Arduino basically just reads from the chip and writes it to an SD card slot which is this card here. Just reads onto this gigabyte SD card. Oops. Oh, oh, tease it, tease it, which just locks in there. So this box you can mount somewhere like under the in a car especially somewhere under the seat or somewhere where it's directly connecting with the chassis. If you put it on a seat or something the seat has a certain amount of spring to it and that's going to throw off the readings. Under the seats or one of the footwells is probably the best location. This is an interface actually built for another project that's just been modded. So this you can hold in your hand and it runs off these two cables one is a mono quarter inch jack which provides power and ground and the other is an 8 pin uh, ethernet cable I believe which supplies the LED, the three switches and then the four pins which run the seven segment display. I'll fire it up and you can see what the uh, display does. So first it's going to run through all the digits to make sure the screen's working and it's going to go to number one. Now it can write to nine different files. So if you see I can hit this button and cycle through the file number that I want to write to. Uh, I'll get back to one. Now if I hit this button, it's a toggle switch, the LED goes on. Now the Arduino is writing the values onto file one on the SD card and then I can press this button again now which is sort of an event marker so whenever this button is pressed the data points will have event written next to them so if you're going through a corner or something you can tap the event pin and it will mark that corner so that when you go to analyze the data it's easier to see. I definitely won't take any credit for the code to get the accelerometer chip to work. I uh, looked around online and found someone who'd written a code that uh, reads the basic values from the accelerometer and sends them to the computer serially and I just modified that program so that it wrote it to an SD card instead and only took the values I was interested in. So all of this code you see scrolling here I think defines the registers, so the memory locations on the uh, accelerometer chip where you can access everything and all these are based on the settings and how to set up different things but the chip starts in a default mode which is very useful for cars at sort of the right range of values and the right accuracy. I had it write the three accelerations and the Z uh, gyro angle. The chip is 6 axis, so 3 axis acceleration and 3 axis turning rate, so it's measured in degrees per second, which is handy for the yaw rate in a car. So that's why I keep that one, and then they're also time stamped with the absolute time that the Arduino has been switched on. Uh, how it's currently set up it can take a measurement every about 25 milliseconds. This is the kind of text file it produces. You can see the values here are X, Y, Z and Z spin. And then this is the timestamp. So this data was read 200,000 milliseconds after the Arduino first powered on. Now these values do need to be modified. Um, this, These values are from the 0 to 2G range, but they're from 0 to 32,000, what, 767 or something like that which is the integer range, so you have to divide it by half of the integer, maximum integer value, and that gets you into G, 
here's some of the data in Excel to be analyzed. So we have the four basic, sorry, five basic numbers that are stored. Then in this case generated the three accelerations and what's referred to as a local time, which is simply the global time or the absolute time that the Arduino has been running minus the first value. Here's an example of some of the graphs you'll be able to reproduce. This is X acceleration, so linear acceleration of the car, and Y acceleration, which is lateral acceleration of the car. As you can see, the car was accelerating and turning here, as both of them are non-zero, zero lines down here. Then the car went into braking, a little bit of trail braking as the lateral g-forces build to a maximum here, then fade as the, corner ex the car exits the corner. Very interesting to see the loading. Here we have the yaw rate, which is also very interesting. From the same data, we see when the car was accelerating, it was also turning. So here we have the yaw rate being non-zero. And then here, with the turning the other direction and the braking, we have a yaw rate as well. Now another very interesting graph is the x versus y, which is the lateral acceleration is plotted along the x-axis and the linear acceleration is plotted across along the y-axis. So we can see how the car enters and exits the corner under loading. Here we have just straight deceleration then trail braking into the full cornering and then exiting the corner with acceleration. Here we have another patch of data which just shows the deceleration of the car in the wet. So the two lines are here are linear acceleration and this is vertical acceleration. The interesting thing to note about this data is how noisy it is. Here, on the right hand side, the car is slow and practically stopped. You can see there's very little noise. But on the left hand side here, the car is going about 80 kilometers an hour. You can see it's very noisy. So it's a, quite a bumpy road. Here is the deceleration. So we have X hanging around at about zero, then going into braking down to about minus 0.6 g along here and then coming to a stop the braking forces diminish. Now this value is really noisy so hopefully you'll be able to see the black line that going along there is a moving average which averages the points around a data point to produce a new data point. It does help squelch out some of the noise when you want to analyze if there has been a change in the acceleration, especially in corners. and So hopefully in the future this same setup will uh, be able to log suspension movements as well and maybe even temperatures of various parts of the engine and tires. Um, the Arduino doesn't use any of its analog pins in the current setup and those can be easy, easily hooked up to uh, potentiometers on the, uh, on the throttle, on the brakes, on the steering and on the suspension arms. So that should be pretty interesting as well. Increase what's being recorded to get more information about the car. But uh, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Comment, like and subscribe if you've got a similar project. Or if you have questions. Just, just do it.